We're ready for our selection sort now. We have the helper method, which is getting the low index. We also got the highest index if we need it later. Uh, in that video, we wrote the testing code for selection sort. But of course, it wouldn't have worked because our selection sort doesn't really do anything. But we're about to make it do stuff now that we have uh, lowest index. The reason I wanted to get that working is because it's super important to make the selection sort work. And if it doesn't work, selection sort won't work. And you usually want to solve a simple problem, make sure you're right, then solve the more complicated problem. And that's a very useful technique in problem solving is make it simple, solve it, and then go ahead and solve the bigger problem. Sometimes there's 10 steps that are simple that you have to accomplish. Uh, luckily for us, there was really only one major step, but I did want to make sure that it worked. And now I have confidence that it did work. Let me put these original values in. All right, so selection sort. Let's go ahead, I think control B goes directly to the definition. All right, so we got a couple couple things we've already done. We have that, that for loop that loops over the whole deck of cards. Uh, oh, I did promise you I was going to make a... Uh, we wanted to get the length of the deck, and the way I did it was I used the get cards to get the array, and I used the length method off of that. But I could write public int, I think length is yeah, usually lowercase. So we're going to basically return this dot cards, except return this dot cards dot length. So now I can just use the length method, boom, get the length of the deck of cards without grabbing the array and then getting the length off the array. So that's a nice, useful method there. Where are we? Bum, bum, bum. Selection sort. If you want to, you could actually, instead of doing cards dot length, you can just do the length method. Uh, because that effectively returns the length of the cards array. Uh, so either way, doesn't matter which one you go for. Um, I'll just leave it with the original because it'll be like the book. All right. Find the lowest card at or to the right of I. Hey, we got the lowest index method. All right. So let's call this int lowest card int lowest index equals index lowest. All right, to the right of i. So that means we're going to start at i and go to uh, cards.length. OK, so we're using that method we wrote, uh, but we do need to feed it the right values. So I did that right there. So that should be lowest index. Now we're going to swap. Well, good news on this too. So what do we call this one? I'm looking down here in the members. So it was called swap cards. All right, one index is I. The other one is lowest index. So this should take the two cards and make them trade places. We already have that code to test it. It's already written. All right, so there's nothing to do when your array is length one or when your array is length zero. So these, these should work automatically. However, don't assume that they're going to work automatically just because they should. All right, right here, there's two. And actually, they're already in order because clubs comes before diamonds. And you can think of this as basically alphabetical order, meaning if the first letter is the same, then you compare by looking at the second letter and the alphabetical order of the suit. The second letter is important here. All right, this one's interesting. We got two eights, so obviously they're the small ones. Which one's the smallest is the eight of diamonds, then the eight of spades. All right, what's next? Oh, we got two J's. So the first, smallest one will be the uh, jack of diamonds because D alphabetically comes before S, and then the last one, 
Jack of Spades. All right. I'm just going to look at the order of this just to make sure the order uh, is correct. And here's where spacing actually, let's, let's space this out nicely. So I'm going to use some tabs. So the slash T slash T here slash T. I'm just estimating how many I'm going to need to line this up. Almost. I need one more slash T. What tabs do is they add certain numbers of space. Well, they actually add a tab, but the tab size fluctuates. So there's one tab and another tab, but it's a great way to get vertical alignment, which is what I wanted to make sure that size didn't change. So let's look at the bigger ones here. So I see the three clubs, three spades, four, five, five, ten, king, looks good. Ace, three, four, five, six, eight, jack, king, king. All right, they all look like they're in order. That's great. So this is selection sort. Uh, we made the uh, index highest. Let's go ahead and write selection sort, but we're going to go reverse selection sort. I'm just cleaning up some extra white space. I usually add extra white space when I'm first writing methods and then I clean it up later. That's exactly what I'm doing now. All right, control shift down. So I'm going to call it selection sort reverse. Uh, instead of index lowest, we're going to go index highest. Now run back here. So again, all I changed was index highest and it's just put the word reverse here. So we got reverse sorted. Reverse sorted, okay. Actually, this is a good way to test to see if it actually uh, reverses. So we have, you know, eight king, king eight, great, five, five, eight, queen, five, five, eight, queen, uh, five, come on, cursor, five, I don't know why it's not working. Anyways, I'll just read them. Five, eight, 10, 10, queen, queen, king, five, eight, 10, 10, queen, queen, king. And then these should be reversed as well. All right, so now I have some serious confidence that selection sort works and also reverse selection sort works. And we're ready to move on to the more serious sorts. Where this sort becomes bad is then you have a very large number of items or very large number of cards. Uh, typically, I don't think you're going to run into more than like six decks worth of cards. So like 350 cards would probably be the most cards you'd ever need to sort in a, in a standard application. I don't think you're going to sort 30,000 cards. Uh, but if you did want to sort 30,000 cards, this would actually take a long, long time. Uh, because if you noticed, it basically looked through the entire deck twice. It went through it one time looking at each card, and then it found the smallest card to the right of that card. So for each card, it went over the deck one time for each card, and then each time it looked at a card, we then looked at the remaining cards to find the lowest. So it basically had to look through the deck twice. Uh, and so the execution time is the length of the array squared, because it had to look through it once for each element in it. Uh, we don't need to worry too much about execution time right now, but let's look at merge sort next.